Thanks for joining us. And today's conversation is on digital fatigue. You are watching the Beyond Sunday podcast. Feeling the theme music in your head? Mm -hmm. Working it out? All right. Let the whole bumper play. You know it's not happening in real time. She'll cut mm -hmm. that together for you. Okay. All right. Okay. So today's conversation yep. is digital fatigue. All right. Everything is digital now. Yes. Even even books, all of the things that you're used to touching your hands to. Shopping is digital. Everything's digital. Don't even have to go in the grocery store. Nothing. And it seems like it's causing, um, especially out of coming through a year and a half almost of wow. a pandemic. Turns out. Where we were forced to live through a screen and through digital right. relationship. What's some of the aftershock that we're experiencing? Right. Well, I think, you know, uh, I think one of the things that I'm seeing, r regardless of the the last year and a half, as, as you had referenced, you know, all of 2020 and, and some of the things that were put on us, I think yeah. one of the, the biggest things is we're finding ourselves in these moments where we're, we're trying to fill space, trying to find some meaning, trying to find... Um, something to just kind of satisfy an itch to entertain us. Uh, there's a whole variety of feelings that we have, a whole variety of needs that we have. And what we do is go to the thing that is at hand all the time. And, you know, for the vast majority of us, that's our phone. Yep. And so whether it's, you know, we're playing a game, we're on social media, um, you know, I, I know, like I'll talk to somebody, hey, what are you doing? Just scrolling through Pinterest, you know. Are you looking for something? Nope. Just seeing what's out there. Yep. Just working out my thumb. Yeah. And um, so it's just it's just this input. Uh, there's it's a way that I think people start to relax, in a sense. You know, it's like, hey, I just want to chill out, and you know, I just begun begin to engage in this way. But just like your thumb is scrolling the world past, time is just fleeting and moving yeah. past you. Have you ever noticed that as you sit and I know I've caught myself saying this. My wife and I have talked about this before where uh, she or I'll say, oh, I'm just, I'm relaxing. Yeah. And yeah, that's what we're relaxing. And to. Yeah. have you ever noticed never relaxing? <laughs> right. I've never got to the point of good rest by right. relaxing with my phone and my thumb. Right. And not to mention, I hold things different now. I have this natural, like I'm getting arthritis in my thumb. <laughs> and so it's got so horrible have, negative side you, effects. You have physical fatigue due to digital things, not actual digital fatigue then. Yeah. it okay. In a roundabout way. You're pretty young what, for that. I know. That's rough. It's getting bad. <laughs> it's right. become digital fatigue from thumb fatigue. Right. It's all, it's all playing right. into each other. You know, one of the interesting things in uh, thinking about today and getting ready for it is that there was an article just last year, you know, you're talking about in the midst of a pandemic. So mm -hmm. special circumstances in the middle of that. But in a survey they did, 61% of the people surveyed reported feeling that they were alone. And, you know, this is a massive uptick from the last time they did the exact same survey just two years before that. That we have an ability to be, you know, quote, connected all the time you know, hey, I can see what's going on in your life. You know, if you happen to go fishing, you know, when you get home tonight, you'll probably end up sharing that online and I'll get to see that. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see what, you know, people that I know uh, think about the current world politics and things like that. I'm always able to receive input on what everybody is thinking, experiencing, and feeling all the time. But yet, we still feel alone. Mm -hmm. it, it's... I think it's troubling when you think about that. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it's an awful relational cycle for sure. Right. Um, our ability to be so connected through the digital world leaves us with, honestly, in a lot of ways, not totally void of, but in a lot of ways without real relationship that's actually fulfilling. Right. Because text messages 
only go so far right. in creating depth of conversation. Right. Yeah. Um, I've never had as rich of a text conversation with you as I have when we are sitting across a table from one another right. or on a couch together having a conversation about something. Right. If that had to be done over text, to be honest, I'm not having it. No. Because that is yeah. a lot. No, we can exchange information via text. Like, hey, here's this. Here's an update. Here's what I'm thinking. But, right. you know, so like, you know, if we have a leadership discussion or something, we're sitting down face to face. We're going, here's what I'm processing. You know, you've got mm -hmm. more to share. Yeah. I think one of the bad things about that point in the relational side of it, because I think there's a relational side. I think there's a rest side. Uh, two different things, both sure. important. But on the relational side, we're so connected at this surface level with all the whole world, every single person in your entire friend circle or all the followers and people you follow on Instagram, you know, whatever all of that is, you receive all this input and you have to process what's going on in their life, what they're doing, maybe respond and react to it. Um, and some of it is emotionally charged. Some of it is ideologically charged and it's sending information to you. So by the time you receive all that, if you said, hey, we should go connect with people. I'm kind of peopled out. Mm -hmm. I've had zero contact with any human beings. There's nothing that has edified me, poured into my life. It's right. all this just inch deep, super wide. Uh -huh. But it took in these small micro amounts all of my kind of mental and emotional energy. And now when it comes to a person encounter, you go, I got nothing left for that. Right. You're like, you are out of gas on something that you have had no time spent in yet, really. Yeah, yeah. You, I'm wasted in an area that I never engaged in yet. Right. And and so, like you were pointing out, for the last year, there are, you know, Zoom meetings and, and teleconferences and all kinds of different ways that we are connecting at this hyper-efficient mm -hmm. but very surface level. Mm -hmm. And... Yet then there are times that we are longing inside for real person-to-person -person connection, and yet we don't have any energy left for it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's one side. I think the other side, as I was mentioning, is on the rest side. Uh, one of the things that you know I've been trying to challenge myself with is that rest piece. It's that at a certain point in the night, my electronic world needs to shut down. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I try and do, you know, I've realized that if I sit down and the last thing that I do before I go to bed is I'm going to sit down and read for a minute. I, you know, my eyes begin following the page. Information comes in at a slower pace. My brain processes differently. And then I'm ready to go to sleep. If I'm doing this all the way up until, oh, lights out. My brain is still wiring. It's still it's like it's yeah. still following the scroll feed, doing this. Yep. And I, I don't have as much of a restful night's sleep. Mm -hmm. You talk to people all the time. Tons of people are going, Yeah, I don't sleep very well. Brain's still too busy. Yeah. What do you do right before you go to sleep? What is it that's going on the this moment is before? Pot calling the kettle black. I'm really bad at this. Oh really? I'm super bad at it. Right. Um it's it's really hard and it's a total distraction and you know, obviously, I, I mentioned the pandemic. I think that had some negative ripple effects, right. and it caused some things. But this started happening long before that, right? Um, and I don't, I don't necessarily remember when it shifted. I think it it naturally moved into it so effortlessly mm -hmm. as everything became more and more advanced. But right. even driving, there's more people driving like this than not. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. You know, you look, everybody's got, even if they don't show their phone, right? it's like, it's right here, because you don't want a cop to see it. <laughs> but it's like you look around, cops here, hey, what up? <laughs> and then you drive by, oh, okay. For any of our police officer listeners. Yeah. Not me. Yeah, not Zach. He, he wouldn't do that to you. Uh, but everybody is, I, I remember an app one time. This, this is when okay. I did, at least I can remember a moment where I was like, oh, this has gotten bad. It was a, an app that tapped into your camera. Okay. So you could turn on your camera and see through your front window, through your camera, and you could keep texting.
it's a bad idea. Don't hear me say that this was sure. genius. Okay. But I, I like, remember Em's this. Em's behind the camera laughing at you right now. I remember She, she realizes like, you've gone over the edge. Oh, no. This is bad. <laughs> wow. I don't know that that still exists. Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. It's one of those but things that when you... But now we don't need you, it because it's just like... When, when you say it out loud, you go, I see where you're going. That's almost a good idea. No, it's, it's not. not. No, it it's never not. hit almost a no, good idea. No, it's not. Nothing about this was almost a good wow. idea. Wow. But it's like we're we're adopting and adapting to make media more and more ingrained in every part of our life. Right. I mean, some people have uh, media on their fridge, like their phone interfaces yeah. with their Who fridge. Who would have Who such would... a thing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, our refrigerator at home has a screen that's like this big, and yep. it's it's a gargantuan iPad. Yep, that's what I've heard. Surfs the web. I got cameras in my fridge. <laughs> I can check it on my phone. I'm so connected, it's not even funny. This would be the point that you go, Your Honor, I rest my case. That's just <laughs> okay. <laughs> let look, him have here's the rest the deal. of the time. I said, Yeah, pot calling the kettle black here. No, I understand. I but, understand. Yeah, yeah, we're really connected. Yeah, and it always seems like a good idea, right? And I, and I think one, one of the things is that with the that longing in us to be connected, uh, I think there's a longing to be engaged, to be entertained, that. We, we've taken what is convenient, what is easy. Um, actual relationship is messy. Actual mm-hmm. relationship takes a lot of effort. And when you actually have to sit uh, in a potentially uncomfortable moment with somebody, look them in the eye and go, mm-hmm. hey, I actually disagree with that. And they're going to respond and go, well, why? And you, you actually have to have the full back and forth and challenge each other like you do in sincere, deep relationships. That takes effort. And... When I'm on my phone, I can go, hey, I, I disagree with you. That's dumb and wrong. And you go. And then I ghost you. Yeah. I'll talk to you in two weeks after hopefully this blew over. Right. And so we end up not engaging in the kinds of relationships that we're meant for. But as as we're looking at this, you know, it's, it's interesting because I think there are some things that, you know, I think all of you would go, eh, I see where you're coming from. What do we do about it? Right. What are some ideas? Sure. Um, you know, so for me, one of the things that, that I'm trying really hard to do, and it's one of those things that you go, ah, I got to build the habit up. Mm-hmm. By the time, you know, we get home, I begin to engage with, you know, my wife and daughter. It's like, you know, hey, if we're going to watch a TV show together, I'm single tasking. My phone, I'm not going to even want to have it close by. Because there's going to be the temptation to just, hey, I'm just going to look at this real quick. And, it's going to go. Burr, burr. And all of a sudden, there's yeah. three of us doing this TV going, that's the show that we're watching over there. <laughs> yeah, we're all doing a real good job at it. Uh, um, did you hear that? That's hilarious. Yeah. So, like, I'll actually put my phone away in the room. Like, yeah. it begins recharging for the night. I shouldn't need it. I, I The world can go on without me. And so, you know, having that discipline of saying, I'm going to put it away. You are recharging. I don't need you until tomorrow. Um, unless I'm intentionally needing it to go, I need to go send an email to somebody. You know, I'm not going to go pick it up. Right. And I think that's I think that's one thing that we can do for that. Yeah. And I think to that point, there's a myth that we we believe that whatever is happening really can't wait. Yeah. And, I'm going to miss out on and something. And it's a total lie. Right. You know, there are some... <laughs> There are some professions where if you're a doctor, you're on call. Right. I, that's that's a little different, but even still, you have to find the balance and how do I engage in this? Right. Uh, and in a lot of times, you have a separate phone for that anyway. Okay. But um, we believe and really feel like, well, it can't wait. Right. You know, if, I don't know how many different times, <laughs> even when we've gone to film podcasts and stuff Mm -hmm. where we'll text somebody hey i'm picking up coffee you want anything Mm -hmm. the reality is if you don't respond immediately boat's leaving you missed it yeah you missed out and it's like oh well we we expect everybody to have phone in hand right ready to respond and if you don't it's like yeah i mean they never text me back yeah it's like wait hold on right can a brother wait an hour (laughs) right no 
So, I mean, that's another great point, as I think uh, our relationship demands have increased. When mm-hmm. you think about it, we wouldn't expect, you know, when I was a kid growing up, you leave voicemails for people. You know, you would call and they're not there. They'll get back to you eventually. Now we expect instantaneous responses mm-hmm. from people, back and forth, back and forth. Yep. And if not, we, we move on. Um, so our pace of relationship is so fast. And when you think about it, imagine if in reality, you know, I've got a handful of friends and as soon as I'm done with work, I go hang out with you for like 15 minutes. Like I got to go because I'm going to go hang out with Micah now. And then I'm hanging out with Micah and I'm supposed to be there for about 45 minutes. But I'm already starting to talk to Mariah because I'm going to be heading over there hanging out with her shortly. And so I'm talking with her on the phone, having a voice conversation while I'm supposed to be hanging out with Micah. And then it's like, yeah, hey, sorry, I'm, I'm doing something else. And, uh, but I got to go now. And then I take off to the next. Yeah. And so from the moment I get off work until I go to bed, I'm just talking with person to person to person to person to person to person to person. And by the time you get to the end of the day, you would go, I am exhausted. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the heck I was doing. That's just miserable. Mm-hmm. And then you would pass out exhausted. In a sense, we've actually bought into a digital version of that exact same behavior yeah thing to thing to thing to thing to thing to thing yeah and at that point it's not even digital fatigue it has now caused full-on fatigue life fatigue right all of it is exhausted right i mean you know when when you think about it when you think about your average day how often do you get the opportunity to sit back and just think just kind of absorb in just be and, and let your mind just go, wander, be creative, process the things that have been going on in your day. But instead, it's full because there's always a new thing coming towards you, mm-hmm. always something new. And and the reality. Not often. Right. And and so as as Christ followers, you know, to kind of land the plane yeah. is that I think one of the things that we see in Jesus is that there were plenty of times where there was in his reality there were all the person to person to person to person to person and and he would do that to meet people meet them where they were meet their needs there are times that he was really tired and he would actually stay and talk with people more because he felt compassion for them he he saw the need but there were still points when he said guys i need to take off for a bit i'm gonna go hang out and i'm gonna get some alone time you know we'd see him napping in the back of the boat, you know, see him alone praying on a mountain. Mm -hmm. There were points where he said, I need to disconnect from the flow of everything to remain healthy. Yep. And we need to do the same thing. Yeah. I think that's really good. One of the, one of the takeaways I think for all of us, and I know for me personally, um, is the reality that relational life on life Mm -hmm. contact does a thing that digital can't do. Right. And it's really, really important. It's a community piece that, as Christ followers, we talk about. No doubt. We were never designed to be alone and be on an island. Right. At all. And so um, I think a really, really good takeaway is to begin, even if you just start with a small area, create a moment where you give yourself the ability to, one, unplug for yourself. Right. Okay. Okay where I'm not going to allow a digital input, and if you can even avoid the TV too, that's probably oh, yeah. a win. Yeah, digital all the way. Yeah, if Turn it's got it a screen and lights, all off. let's dodge it for a yep. little bit. So create a space for that, and then also relationally, create a space where you're having contact with another human right. that is purely designed to build up. Right. We're going to spend time together, no device. Right. It's out of reach, out because if it's in reach, it's gonna get reached for. Yep. I don't no know that I've ever yeah. been in a moment where, you know, let's say you have a lunch meeting or you're having lunch with somebody, yeah. phone's right here on the table, just in case. Yeah. Even if even if just a quick glance, and I I do this too. Again, pot calling the kettle black. If it's I saw that, like phone up, you know, you just tap it real quick, just check anything. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Listen. Oh, yeah. Keep talking. And you do it, it's become an addiction. Yeah. I've actually heard from someone, and sorry, I don't have the study or anything to back it up. You guys are brilliant. You'll figure it out. But that some of the same impulse, that reach for Mm -hmm. the phone, 
is the same uh, kind of brain process that you see with a chemical uh, dependency and addiction. Mm -hmm. That it's actually that, boom. It's the same wiring, Mm -hmm. same kind of feeling, same kind of release that's happening inside of the mind. And that's troubling. Mm-hmm. And and so I think, you know, the biggest thing that I could say as a takeaway is we've got to start having the discipline, you know, as, as Christ followers, one of the things that we would say is, hey, man, we've got to set aside time to pray. We should have uh, time to read the word. We also have to have time to rest, to disconnect. Um, you know, in Psalm 46, you know, be still and know that I'm no, yeah. hard, hard to be still and really experience God to talk with him, to encounter him when we're always inputting. Mm-hmm. It's too noisy in here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a good first step for yeah. us. So yep, I agree. thanks for hanging out with us digitally. And now go disconnect for a while and we'll see you next time. This has been another episode of the Beyond Sunday podcast. And don't forget, like, share and subscribe.